This story was sent to me by one of my subscribers. Shout out to Brother Mark 1992. And he was adamant that I speak about this story. Trust and believe. I've seen your comments, like you posted about it a lot, and you really wanted me to talk about the story. It's not that I'm ignoring anybody, and I've told people this before, that I get a lot of comments or a lot of notifications or a lot of emails, so it's like kind of hard for me to cipher through all of them. Like, if you looked at my inbox, which I remember a couple months ago posting a screenshot of it, and it had over 3,000 inbox messages, whether read or unread, I get a lot of messages per day day so and because i that's why i do four videos a day because if i posted like every story i did as soon as i did them it would be too much it would y'all would get overloaded and i know some of y'all like the stories and everything like that but i have to also do this so i can keep track of everything myself that's why i do four videos a day so i put myself on a schedule and I feel like now I have a decent sized following where I don't have to constantly pump out videos like I did when I was just getting started on a consistent basis back in 2016 where I was posting videos like almost 10 times a day. So trust and believe I am seeing your emails. I'm seeing your comments, but it just takes me a while to get around to it. Just be patient. So with that being said, I'm about to get into the story right here that came out actually A couple weeks ago where you have this officer right here whose name is Patrick Edmonds Jr. He was responding to a particular call about some incident that was going on. And he ran into this white woman by the name of Shannon Rupert, who was 45. Now, some of you have already seen the video in which he went inside the establishment and she started saying racial and racist things to him. And then all of a sudden she picks up these scissors and. And prepares to start charging at this man. He gives her verbal commands to stop, put the scissors down, put her hands up as if he was preparing to arrest her. But she continued to charge at him. And then that's when he shot her. Now, his body camera was on. Thankfully, his body camera was on because I have a feeling if it wasn't on, it probably would not have looked good for him. Now, what has come out about this situation is in a shocking turn of events. And you'll see why is that he is not being brought up on any charges of wrongdoing or killing this woman. Now, I think the shocking thing is, of course, the obvious. This is a black man who killed a white woman. The last time a melanated man killed a white woman, he ended up getting jailed for 12 and a half years. And that is what I'm talking about, Muhammad Noor shooting that Justine chick. And then, of course, this also happened in... I believe it happened. Yes, it happened in Louisiana. And also, if you remember what happened in Louisiana with those two cops, I'm just put it like this. Two cops, car, white guy, little boy in the front seat, shot white boy in the back of the head by accident because the father used the car as a weapon. They both got 40 plus years each and nothing happened to the dad. No, without having to explain the entire story over and over again. And of course, you know, they went to jail. Nothing happened to the dad. But. The shocking turn of events here is that this guy is not having any uh, charges pressed against him. And this was based on evidence that was reviewed by the police chief of Bossier County. I hope I'm pronouncing it uh, correctly. It happened in Bossier uh, City. I'm sorry, uh, Louisiana. I don't know where that is. I've never heard of it. I don't know how close or how far it is from New Orleans. Now, the reason why I'm doing this video is because you have a sector, we'll just put it like that, of people who are upset about what happened. And they are saying, why couldn't he have used a taser or he could have handled it better? He didn't have to shoot to kill this woman. Look. The woman was coming at him with a pair of scissors, which could be used as a weapon because scissors should only be used to cut something, not to stab, unless it's self-defense in which she was not defending herself from any danger. He was defending himself of anything else. As far as I'm concerned, he was fearing for his life. The body camera clearly showed, and it was two cameras, his body cam and the surveillance camera that was in where in the location where they was at. So, it was no way that they could really say that she was the victim here or and he was the aggressor. 
it was showing that she was the aggressor and he was the potential victim from two different vantage points, his body camera and the surveillance camera that was on her side of whether, cause you know, she was on the side of a counter and where she came out and started to charge at this guy at this cop. But you have a certain sector who was upset because they said he could have used the taser. He could have shot not to kill, but maybe to injure. Now, reverse this and let's say that she was the cop and he was the uh person he wouldn't have even needed to be the aggressor all she would have did was say so your hands pop pop shoot him kill him and then she probably would have got desk duty or not even gotten that look look at what happened with betty shelby and those people in that sector would not have come out and said the things that they said and said uh that she that they could she could have um used a taser or shot to injure and not to kill they would have said oh he got what he deserved oh he shouldn't have been resisting oh he should have just been following police orders they didn't say any of that when it came to her just like when it happened with muhammad Noor, when he shot and killed justine that justine chick they didn't use that whole uh thing with him they said just lock him up same thing with those two black cops that i was talking about they didn't say anything in defense of them they just said lock them up matter is or the point of it is that blue lives matter crap is a very one-sided doctrine that only serves and protects palm colored cops it does not work in the favor of black cops but today we can see there is an exception to the rule don't expect this to happen often He was very lucky that they did not go against what he had to do because they could have easily said that he was in the wrong. But he's not being fired. He's not being pushed to administrative leave or pushed to desk duty. He still has his job as a cop doing what it is that he is being paid to do. And palm color. Oh, I said it. I didn't even want to say palm color in the video, but there it is. That sector is upset because let's just face it. It was a black male cop, a black male cop that killed a white woman. They didn't care that this woman was being a racist and that she was threatening this man's life. All they cared about was they said that she, he could have used a taser to just stun her, but they never say that when the roles are reversed, they are so transparent. It's not even funny. That's why it's so easy for me to get up on here and do these type of videos about them with very little, uh, I guess you could say, emotion in my tone, because I expect that from them. It doesn't shock nor surprise me that they wanted to come out and be on cold for this woman. It doesn't surprise me. But at the end of the day, I'm going to use their own little uh, terminology that they use for us against them. You play stupid games and you win stupid prizes. She was contestant labeled stupid and her prize was a bullet to wherever it hit her. And now she's deceased. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments and I'll talk to you in the next one.